Hey, welcome back to New Zealand. So since I'm in the process of converting my little Honda Beat to electric, I needed another car to drive in the meantime. Most of the time I just ride my electric motorcycle around, but I'm one of those motorcycle riders that doesn't ride in the rain because I ride for fun and riding in the rain isn't fun. It's actually raining right now, which is perfect timing. And I needed something bigger so that I can go to the hardware store and get something that might be too big to carry on my bike. So we bought a Nissan Leaf. If you've seen my videos in the past, we used to have a 2011 Nissan Leaf. And that was pretty fun, it's a cool car. So we kind of knew what we were getting into with this. And the used market for Leafs is huge now, like you can get them so cheap. We scored this one for $3,800 New Zealand, which is something like 2300 US. That's crazy cheap. So if you want to go electric, the deals are out there, but you definitely get what you pay for. This particular Leaf is pretty rough. The battery on this one degraded down to only 5 bars, which translates to about 70 k's of range. And the body's all banged up because the previous owner hit a guardrail. So right now you're probably thinking, What a piece of junk! But it has heated seats and a heated steering wheel, so it doesn't matter what it looks like. To stay warm while I commute over the winter and not pay for gas while I convert the beat, this is perfect. 70 k's of range probably isn't enough for most people, but for me, just to commute to work, go to the gym, go to the hardware store to get supplies, it's pretty much all I need. We got this little adapter thing from Type 2 from our Tesla uh, outdoor plug thing to the J plug so that we can just use the same outdoor charging situation. I've been driving it about two weeks now and I generally charge twice a week so it works fine for me. One thing I'm curious about is how big is a 5 bar Leaf's battery? Originally this Leaf had 24 kilowatt hours but how much is left? How many kilowatt hours am I using to go those 70 k's? So my plan is to head to a charging station and get as low, you know, close to 0% as possible and see how much electricity goes in. I'm putting a 13.4 kilowatt hour Energica battery in the beat. So if the Leaf has a similar capacity, that'll give me a good idea of what kind of range the beat's gonna have. Also, the beat is almost exactly half the weight of a Leaf, so I feel like the range isn't gonna be too bad, especially like if 70 k's of range in the Leaf works for me now, then in the beat, it's gonna be perfect. So let's hit that charging station and see how much capacity is left in this battery. Two hours later. Okay, that charging test didn't happen, so it's time to tell a story. All right, I'm in Miramar, right? And I had to drop off something to my buddy Simon at the EV conversion shop in Petoni. So I figured I'd blow through as much battery as I could on the way there and then charge up at the Z station on the way back. I started with 35 k's of estimated range and on the highway it was dropping really quick. I actually didn't think I would make it but when I got there it said I still had 20 k's of range left. But I thought yeah that's low enough and so I told Simon where I was going and he's like oh cool Zed ripped out the charge net station and put in their own. Oh no, another account to sign up for and a new app to download, but whatever, I'm here, let's just do it. This app is not available for your device. This is when I found out my Google login stuff is from the US, and so a lot of the apps here for charging stations, kind of like Open Loop, I had a problem with them too, I just couldn't download the app because it just doesn't work with the country that my phone's set up for, which means that tourists who come to New Zealand and rent EVs can't charge at Z stations. So what else is around? What are my options? Pack and Save has two stations, and they're both faulty. The next closest one is at the Dow's Museum in Lower Hutt. Okay, only 10 minutes away at slow speeds. No problem, I arrived with 17 k's remaining. There were two stations there, and both of them were blocked by EVs. Neither of them were charging. I checked the ChargeNet app, and I could either go further away to Upper Hutt, or limp my way back to the city somehow. There are tons of charging stations in the city, right? Surely one of them's gonna be available. Surely. I don't even know how much range the car had at this point because when it gets down to two battery bars, Nissan thought it was a good idea to put dashed lines instead of your range. So now I'm driving blind. I could have 10Ks left, 5Ks left. This is what gives people range anxiety. Anyway, I checked the ChargeNet app and there was a car at every single station. The app actually gives you details of each station, so it'll tell you if there's a car there plugged in and what percentage they're at, and also if there's a car there plugged in but not charging which was the case at a few of them. So my goal was to make it to Pack and Save in Kilburnie and just wait for whoever was there to finish charging. I got down to one battery bar on the way there and I can't remember the last time my heart rate was so high, but I got there somehow and there was an ENV 200 van plugged in. Totally fine, I'll just wait. Like, I've been through so much already. What's another 15 minutes? So I'm doinking on my phone, just killing time. I look over, I see the driver, he's just sitting in his car waiting too. I check the ChargeNet app, it's almost at 80%. So I figure, cool, he's gonna unplug because EV etiquette and such, he knows I'm waiting, and so that's the right thing to do, right? Nope, 
he just lets it keep charging all the way to 95%, which is as high as these stations go. But whatever, another 10 minutes, totally worth it, I don't care. Eventually I hear the van beep to say the charging's done and the station unplugs the cable. And so I look over and I'm like, cool, we're, uh, we're ready to go, right? Nope, he's still sitting in the van. Doesn't get out, doesn't unplug the cable. So I, I mean, he's just getting charged to idling fees at this point, but I need to charge, right? So I get out and I'm gonna ask if we could swap places. But as I walk up, I see this elderly couple in another EV on the other side of the van and they're grabbing the CCS cable about to plug in their car. And I'm like, what, come on. <laughs> like, first of all, you can't plug in another vehicle until the one is unplugged and back in the station and stuff. And second, I was in line, EV etiquette, right? But I guess they didn't see me cause I was on the other side of the van, just like I didn't see them. So I'm like, screw it. I don't want to like cause a scene and explain the whole thing and like, teach you guys how to charge because it seems like it's your first time here and I don't want to ruin the whole EV experience for them because they seem new to it. I'll just try and get it home somehow. Well about halfway home I see the turtle on the dash and my last remaining battery bar abandons me. I pulled it in my driveway and the leaf shut off. Actually Jen had to help me push the car closer to the house so I could plug in. I guess all of this is to say there are a lot of cheap EVs on the market these days but if I could give any advice to somebody who's interested in a car like this Find something that has enough range so that you only have to charge at home. Like, it'll get you everywhere you need to go without having to plug in somewhere else. And if you can't plug in at home, don't even bother. The public charging infrastructure here is a mess, and it's getting even more ridiculous. Unless you want to download tons of apps and deal with people who don't know how EV etiquette works, it's just going to frustrate you, and I wouldn't recommend it. But I still want to find out how big this battery is, so I'm not giving up yet. 8.01 p.m. Okay, finally plugged in, and we're gonna test how big this battery is. We had to come at night. This is the only time that was actually free. Jen's afraid of the dark. <laughs> but yeah, we're only doing half the battery because it's, you know, you can just multiply it by two. And also it's only gonna take like 15 minutes instead of half an hour, so. Let's see, let's see what the final number is. So almost 95%, 3.1 kilowatt hours, which means that was about half the battery, and so the full battery capacity right now is 6.2 kilowatt hours. That is tiny. That is half the size of the battery that I'm putting in the beat. So range is gonna be no problem at all. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time in a, a video with a beat, hopefully. <laughs> okay, bye.